Hi guys, welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In today's video, we're going to look at the workday function. Now what this function allows you to do, it allows you to take a date and return the nearest working day, either in the future or in the past, based on an offset value that you're going to put in. This can be useful when you want to calculate things like due dates, delivery dates, or completion dates that are required, taking into account working days, non-working days, and holidays. So in this example, we're going to take a look at what the next working day after Friday the 1st of the 1st, 2021 is using this function. So we're going to start out equals workday. And what you'll do is you'll select your current date or the date you want your start date to be. The next parameter is the number of days. So we want the next working day. So one day in the future, or one working day in the future. And the last parameter is optional. It's your holidays. It allows you to set out a number of days that should be considered as holidays. So in this example, I'm going to use this list of UK holidays here. So this can be a range. We did a very similar thing when we looked at network days in a previous video. So we're going to put those in, make those absolute, and then we'll close our brackets. And what you'll find is that your next working day after Friday the 1st is Monday the 4th. So in this example, we can change this to any date. So if, for example, I was to look at the 1st of April, we have Good Friday and Easter Monday. So we would expect that the next working day after that would be Tuesday the 6th. And you'll see that that's the case. So say you had a project starting, which had a due date 10 working days after the start, and the start date was the 1st the 4th. You could then input 10 working days here and it will tell you what your due date is 10 days after that, taking into account weekends and bank holidays. Now in a similar way to your network days function, the work days function has a second version, which allows you to set weekends that are non-standard. It works in the exact same way. It's this workday.intl, and you will still select your start date. You will select your number of days, and then this third parameter is where you would set your custom weekends. So if we had Sunday only as a weekend, you would select 11. And then again, we can put in our holidays. Now this is obviously most useful where you have non-standard weekends and you would obviously return a different result because Saturday is counting as a working day. Now, if we just undo that. One thing I find particularly useful with the workday function is its ability to help you determine whether a particular date is a working day or not a working day. And how this formula is going to work is we're going to look at the day before our current date and then ask the function, is one day on from that the same as our current date? And we'll get a true or false value. So breaking that down, I'm going to say equals workday. We want our current date minus one. Then we want our value one day in the future. We're going to add in our holidays. And I'm going to make that absolute. And for now, I'm just going to hit enter to see what value returns. So you'll see that our next working day, because Friday the 1st is a bank holiday, is returning Monday. Now, if we were to finish this formula by saying, is that equal to the current date, you would get a false. However, if I were to change this to the fourth of the first, it then returns a true. So if I copy this down, you'll see that all my holidays and weekends are going to come up as false. So Friday the first is a bank holiday. Saturday and Sunday are false. Monday through to Friday are true because they're working days. Saturday and Sunday again are false. So this gives you a true or a false value based on whether it's a working day and the list of holidays that we've put in. And if you have non-standard weekends, you can always update this function to include the .intl and add in what those custom weekends need to be. You can also incorporate that into an if statement to give one value if it's true and one value if it's false. So if we were to copy this over. We 
we can take this function and incorporate it into an if statement. So equals if, add in our function, and if it's true, we want to say workday, and if it's false, we want to say non working day. And again, you can copy this down to get our true and false results in words. So I can now change these dates to any day of the working year. And it will tell me whether it's a weekday or not. I've obviously formatted these in a custom format with the day of the week in front just to make it a little bit easier to see. So this has been a really quick introduction to the workday function as well as how you can use it to check whether any particular date is a working day or a non-working day. If you've got any particular questions, please do leave me a comment. I'd also love to hear any suggestions you might have for future videos. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and I do look forward to seeing you in a future video.